UCLA football just wrapped up spring practice number 11 this morning at Spalding Field and this season there is no shortage of talent at the quarterback position. After practice we were able to catch up with QB coach Ryan Gunderson as he breaks down what he's seeing from his guys this spring. We're focused on, on what's happened most recently. Um, it's hard to see it in total right now uh, but in the day to day, they're doing better, just trying to get better every day. Uh, like the progress of the quarterbacks, offensively progressing as a unit, kind of a lot of new faces, so getting used to each other. But uh, fun group to work with. Colin and, and Dante are the two newbies. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, how, how, how have you seen their progression? Uh, it's big. I mean, it, it's, this is totally different for both of them in totally different ways. So, uh, you see it more so with them. They, you know, have bigger leaps and bounds and setbacks and gains. It's, you know, it's a little bit of a roller coaster because it is so new. But they're both super talented, different, but really fun to work with. Um, eager, coachable, get really awesome kids. There's all that learning you're talking about, but there's, it's also competitive, right? So, yes. So at this early juncture, is that sort of in the back of your mind where these guys are supposed? sort of ranking and how that changes or is it are you mostly focused on just each guy improving as much as possible right now and let that sort it out later it's the second um i i just don't think anybody is good enough or or you know playing consistently well enough on a day-to-day -day basis to where you can worry about competing against somebody else they've all got individual stuff to worry about um we'll cross that road when we get to it um because it's not like i said earlier like the day-to-day -day, i don't it's really not a competition in that sense. It's just building them all up to where, you know, the highest point we can get them, and then we'll see how it sorts out. How do they all get along? They're awesome. Like, the room is so enjoyable to just to sit in there, and, and you've got someone like Chase Griffin who's been here for so long. He's, you guys all know it. He's an unbelievable person. Um, he kind of is a really uniting force. He's awesome to have in the room, so it's been really fun with him. Does Ethan wear a GoPro every practice? Yeah, yeah, that's part of our, our virtual reality system. So we film the reps that he takes. It's not unique to like, he's number one. It's just he gets a lot of reps and we just keep it on his helmet so we're not changing it out. But those reps um, go into a computer system we have. They can put on an Oculus and they can watch those reps. In coaching, you would you always say like, hey, why didn't you throw this? And I'm watching it from 50 feet back, the whole field, 50 feet high, or the end zone. That's not the view that they see it from. They see it from right here. So that's a 360 GoPro that can see everything, not necessarily just where he's looking. It's a really, really good teaching tool to say, well, why didn't you see this? Well, coach, that's why I didn't see it. I can't. Yeah. Um, so that we work through that and we coach off of that just as much as we coach off of the other stuff. Is that something you this year? Uh, we started doing that um, maybe last fall. I'm trying to remember, but Dorian had it on his helmet last fall. As for uh, Colin, I mean, obviously we've seen his big arm. Um, yeah. What are some of the things, because he's talked about, you know, some of the ups and downs, trying to pick things up. What are some of the things that you uh, are constantly working with him uh, and trying to, uh, you know, kind of just smooth out a little bit. Yeah, Colin and I share some some commonalities. Like, he played the OC at Kent State. It was a guy named Andrew Souter, who I worked with for a year at San Jose State, running the system that they ran at Kent State. So there's some, hey, Colin, this is like this. Or um, we can kind of work through that a little bit. It's very different. There are some similar things, but it's different. Um, there's a lot of stuff that might be new to him that he kind of worked through. Like you said, big live arm. It's as strong as I've seen. Um, and then a, a really, really impressive athlete, too. Uh, but he's just getting used to something that's totally different, where he's played college football, which is really good. He's going to understand the speed. He played against Georgia last year, Washington, um, Oklahoma. Like, he's seen some, some monsters, but just getting used to the new, uh, but it, it's, he, he makes those same strides. There was some uh, just like chippiness at the end of practice today, obviously not with your quarterbacks or anything, but yeah. is that, do you like to see that kind of emotion? Um, you like to see people playing with emotion, but not being emotional. Um, 
competing is great. That takes some emotion to compete, but it doesn't, uh, you don't want it. There's a line and uh, sometimes it can be gray, but once it's crossed, it is certainly not gray. So we gotta focus on competing and then leaving it there. My guys aren't really involved. In yeah, right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was the uh, NFL draft. Uh, you, yeah. you gotta have some interest in the DTR. And yeah. What are your What are your thoughts on that? I'm hoping for the he goes to the best situation possible. Um, I think we've kind of here prepared him and given him everything we can to get him to the best place. He, you know, so hopefully he can hit the ground running. Hopefully he can go in there and learn and, and really soak in more. Uh, but I'm excited for him, you know, whatever, whenever it is. I, I just hope it's the best situation possible. And with the uh, offensive line numbers, you know, kind of affecting things a little bit, how do you, you know, assess the quarterback as far as how they handle pressure and, you know, some of those less than ideal uh, circumstances? Uh, get it out of your hand. Don't hold on to it. Feel pressure, move in the pocket, climb. Um, they've got to work on finding that it's, Quarterbacks, sometimes you got, well, there was pressure on that play. Well, no, the quarterback created pressure. He drifted right into a problem. Um, so we, we look at that stuff a lot. Um, they need to get it out of their hand, uh, play with speed. You can say play slow pre-snap so you can play fast post-snap. Um, get as much information so you can get the ball to your hand after the snap and, and, and play fast and be available and not be on your back. Some of the shotgun snaps on, on, on different days have been a little spotty. Is, is that something that, uh, that the, the quarterbacks you know, talk about a little bit? Or you... No, I, I trust me. I've I've been places where the shotgun snaps are bad. These are. I think it's been pretty good for. Um, we've got some consistency at center with Duke and with uh, with Euner and doing a nice job. Like. Trust me, I've seen it where it's flying all over the place. You never know. So at least if we're in this range, that's good. It, it's not really something we talk about. And as far as uh, Dante goes, I mean, what are some of the things that immediately jump out at you, with, you know, a guy that young? Uh, I, I would say on the field, Dante has a as quick a release and is as accurate as you'll see. Um, it's that age old I have a huge arm and I can hold on to it a little longer or I have a quick release and I'm really accurate he is quick and accurate it's really impressive um, off the field he's always up there he is always in that building um, smile on his face fun to be around he's uh, he, he's, he's, he's been a joy so far um, he's a football junkie and he likes being around the team so he's a uh, you guys will get to know him. He's, he's a great young man. I know you said Ethan gets a lot of reps as we're in the GoPro. What does he kind of bring, like, presence-wise? Does he have, like, a maturity about him? It seems yeah, like he does. He's – Ethan is um, – he's been here. He's mature. He's, he's older now. Um, he knows – he knows kind of the why, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, it's not always the what or the how. It's – there's a little deeper understanding, um, but he's he's you know working to find a real consistency on the day. That we, that's what we need him to be is really steady, and he's we know exactly what he's going to do with the ball when it's his turn. So he's he's been good. He's getting a ton of reps. As far as uh, Justin goes, we've seen you know the first two weeks we saw quite a bit of him in those 11 on 11 uh, you know periods at the end, um, a little bit less you know this past week. Uh, is there something in the bat, or is that just kind of how things, you know, kind of played out? Yeah, it's just kind of how he did a nice job today. We got him in there. Um, we're kind of rolling guys, seeing what they can do. Uh, but I think whatever you guys see out here, like there's there's some give and take and different reps in different days. But he does a nice job. Um, Justin's arm and athleticism are high level. Um, and kind of trying to get him to go a little more, run a little bit, uh, kind of be a little bit more of a threat to the defense, but he's he's doing a nice job, he's coming along well. Gunderson and the rest of the Bruins will be back on the field this Saturday to wrap up spring ball week four. Make sure to check in with Bruin Blitz for any updates and highlights.